Hello everyone, this video will see how we can use Redis to store our session data and why would we even want to use uh, something like Redis to store our session data instead of the default approach used by Spring and Spring Security. So right here I have this app, uh, that simple app that has only this uh, controller that return hello and I have these two dependencies. The first one is the Spring Security Starter and the Spring Starter Web. So when I run my application, okay, so if I go to localhost 8080, I get redirected to this uh, login uh, page. So when I log in, for example, uh, let me get the password from the console. All right? So when I log in, there we go. So I can access the uh, the resource, so I have the authorization. And how does this work in Spring Security? Basically, Spring create a, a session for us. And if we go to application right here, we can find it. This is G session ID that uh, gets sent with every request to the backend to our server. And our server basically uh, check if we are the correct user. And if it is, then uh, it gave us the authorization to access uh, this resource, right? So now, where does uh, Spring uh, store the session data? Uh, Spring Security by default store the session data in the context, in the Spring context. And what I mean by the Spring context is just like some local variable. For example, Spring create something like the string session data and put it right here, for example. So this is how Spring by default store the session data in the application, in the context. But this approach is not really good. And the first problem with this approach is, for example, let's say our server is down and we restarted. So let me restart the server. Okay, so if I restart the server and I reload my application, I am no longer have the authorization. So my ses this session is no longer valid. And the reason why is because, as I said, this local variable is gone. So when I rerun uh, the server, uh, all my Spring uh, or all my session data is gone, which is pretty bad for the users because you will be all unauthenticated <laughs> when, uh, the, uh, when the app is uh, restarted. So this is not good for the user experience. And another thing which is pretty bad also with this approach is scaling. And when we try to scale, this approach uh, won't work. And uh, let me show you why and how. So this is our application. We have this Spring app that we have uh, right here. So this is our app and we have a bunch of users. So when a user tries to authenticate and pass in the, the password and username, uh, Spring or the application checks the, the credentials and if they are valid, uh, it creates some session. It creates a session data and it sends it uh, to the user back with set cookie in a cookie, right? So now when the user sends a request to access some resource, uh, we check uh, the session and it's valid and then we give him access uh, to the data that he wanted, right? So this is how session based authentication work. But let's say we have a lot of users. So we can no longer have just this little application. We need more instances. We need to scale out. We need to do what we call horizontal scaling. So how do we use, how do we do horizontal scaling? We simply add more instances. So we have instance one, instance two, instance three, right? And we have some kind of load balancer to balance the load on these three servers. So we have this user too, for example, he sent a request uh, and the load balancer, for example, send him to this instance right here, right? And we create the session for this user. We create it right here, right? And we return the session to the user. Now, when the user try to send a request to access some data, for example, to access some resource, the load balancer will not send him 100% to this server or to this instance. It might send him, let's say, to this instance instead because the load balancer just sent the, the request to these three instances by load. It doesn't care uh, if the session was created in this instance. 
So when the load bus sends the request to this instance, it won't find the session data. So we will return a 403. So the user won't have the authorization to access the data, even though he just authenticated. So horizontal scaling won't work with the Spring Security def default approach of storing the session data in the context, right? So what is the solution? The solution is simply to use a store to store our session data, simply. And now we will see the same scenario. So let's say user1 authenticate, send him to this instance. So right here, we don't create uh, the session data or we don't store the session data in the instance. Instead, we store it right here in Redis, for example. And when the user try to, so I return to the user to session, and when he tried to authenticate, even though the load balancer sent him to this instance tree, for example, instance tree will check the store, will check the register store, and it will find that this session is valid, and it will give him the resource successfully. So this is uh, why we want to use uh, some kind of store to store our session data, because it works just fine with the horizontal scaling. And for storing, we can use whatever we want. We can even use some kind of database like MySQL, but it's not good. It's not really good. Why? And why we want to use Redis? Because Redis is an in-memory key value store, and it's pretty fast. So this is why we choose Redis. We choose it for performance, and we choose it also for for its uh, for the, of the type of the store because it's a key value, and key value is perfect for our case. We want to just store some session data. So how do we uh, make this in our application, right? But the first thing we need to do is to have Redis. We want to have Redis in our machine. So I already have Redis. So I already have Redis CLI in my local machine. And how does Redis work? Redis is pretty simple. Like we can just use Redis CLI and for example, I want to add a key. So you just create a key. For example, let's call it key one. And we give it a value, like value one, value one. And that's it. We created the uh, key. And when I try to see all the keys that I have, there we go. So we have this key created for me. Right? So how, so this is the first thing we need to have Redis in our machine. The second thing, we need to add some dependencies to our application. So we want to add uh, basically two dependencies. The first one is the Spring Boot Starter Data Redis, and we want to add the Spring Session Data Redis. And the reason we want to add the Spring Boot Starter Data Redis is to help us with auto-configuration of the Redis. So we won't be doing any configuration uh, Spring Boot will take care of all the configuration. So this is why we add uh, this uh, dependency. And we also add the Spring Session data Redis because we won't be using uh, the session of the uh, of the Tomcat because Spring Boot is based on Tomcat and we are using uh, the session of this uh, application container. And if you see, if you go here, we can find the G session ID. And this is the session of uh, Tomcat or the application container. So we don't want to use this uh, session mechanism. We do not want to stay dependent on the Tomcat. We want to have some other session management and we can use Spring Session for that. So we add these two dependencies and we reload our Maven so we can resolve the new dependencies what, that we just added. There we go, so it's good. The second thing we need to do is to go to application properties and add this property, which is Spring Session Store Type Redis. So we basically tell Spring Session that we'll be using Redis because you can use a lot of type. You can, for example, use some GGBC, like as I said, MySQL, or you can use MongoDB, or you can use none if you don't want to store your sessions in a store. In our case, we want to use Redis. So we tell Spring Session that we'll be using Redis. And you can also specify some information about uh, Redis. For example, let me Redis. We can specify the client name. We can specify the host. The default uh, host value is localhost, so it's correct for me. Uh, 
So we can specify a lot of stuff about radius in in our application uh, properties. For me, I'll just keep the default because I'm using Redis on the default port and also the default uh, host. And that's it. That's all I need. So let me rerun the server and let me check what will happen. Okay, so the server is up and running. We will take uh, the password from Spring Security. So let me just take the password. Where is it? Uh, there we go. This is the default password. And let me uh, reload the application. And you might see that we have a new session. So as I said, we no longer use the G session ID. We use the session we, we, because we added Spring Session to our application. So we no longer use the G Session ID, the default uh, session management by Tomcat. So let me delete this one and also delete this one because we want to see it get created. So let me authenticate first. So I authenticate, I pass in the password. There we go. So we have right here this session and for some reason I'm not authenticated. Let me copy the code or the password again. Okay. There we go. So I'm authenticated. I'm able to access the resource that is secured and I have right here my session. So now let me restart my server and we'll see. Or before restarting the server, okay, just let me restart the server first. So if I restart the server, uh, because we are using Redis to store our session, uh, we, sh we need to stay authenticated, right? So, okay, so let me restart the server. And I'm still authenticated. So this is uh, the beauty of using uh, Redis. Even though I'm, I restarted the server, I'm still authenticated. I do not have to authenticate again as before, in, before adding Redis. So now let me go to the Redis CLI and let me print the keys and there we go. So right here I have this bunch of data and this is basically Spring Session storing my session data in Redis. So we have the principal name, so this is the user and we have the, the session data right here stored for the user and also we have some metadata like expiration and other stuff. So this is why Redis is a very good solution to store our session. We we get rid of the two problems that I talked about earlier. The first one is when the server is down, we, we do not lose or we do not, uh, the user do not lose uh, their authentication and we can scale. For this, so when you use Redis, we can scale our application with how many instances that we want with no issues. So that's it.